Kariya Thirumal was from the Pichara, a coastal town a little north of Kadakare. From there he was making a living by sailing a boat to the island of Elam. About 25 years ago he was once coming from Elam to Tapichara when a storm hit and the sea was rough. He tried hard to bring the boat ashore without capsizing. Kadakare came near the lighthouse and as he neared the shore he saw a woman floating in the rough sea. Taking pity on her, he put her on the boat. She was then unconscious. Can't even find out if there is life or not. Couldn't even see the boat land there. He steered the boat in the direction of the wind and at last reached the shore near the town of Tirapakakadu. As the unconscious girl was carried to the shore and watched anxiously, some big men came up on their horses. But she did not speak. He didn't seem to be listening to what others were saying. She was born deaf and dumb, said one of them. The man who appeared to be their leader called the pregnant woman alone and told her a strange message. He said that when the storm subsided, he should take the girl to Esla country and leave her in that country or on one of the nearby islands, and he would pay a lot of money for it. According to this, Satari Raman agreed and received the money. When the sea calmed down, he took her in a boat. He saw a man floating in the middle of the sea holding a log. He also took him in the boat, who was very tired. At first the girl was frightened by the new man. After that, she ignored him. He took both of them and dropped them on an island near Eza. There was a great man on that island, he claimed this girl as his daughter. He said that earlier she was dumb and now she doesn't even recognize herself. Then he told her that he had saved her from the sea. A man who boarded a boat in the middle of the ocean gave a leaf to Thirimana and sent him to take it to the king of Sri Lanka. From then on he decided to become a great man. After giving the leaf to the king of Sri Lanka, he learned that the person he saved from his speech was the king of Pandya. The king of Sri Lanka sent retinues to fetch the Pandya king. Satari Raman did not go with them as he was very tired. The Pandya king arrived at the palace of the Sri Lankan king after a few days. Together, the two kings went to the Rahana country, which was surrounded by mountains in the southern part of Sri Lanka. They stayed there for a few days. The Pandya king, who was in love with the concubine, took him with him. The Sri Lankan king also showed the Pandya king many places in Rahana country. At last, he led to a valley where no one could easily approach. There, in a mountain cave, countless gold coins, Navaratnams, priceless ornaments etc. were kept. After visiting them all, the Sri Lankan king took out a golden box and opened it. Within it were a crown of bells that shone brightly, and a jeweled harem. From the discussion of the kings, he came to know that the crown was the ancient crown of the kings of the Pandya dynasty and that this jeweled harem was said to have been given by Devendra to the chief of the Pandya clan. The Sri Lankan king forced Pandyan to take them away. The Pandyan king refused. Then the Pandya king gave as much gold as he could carry to the Pandyan king and sent him to come back to the Pandyan country and join him after arranging for the safe custody of the dumb girl. When Satari Raman went to Bhutativi, he did not find the girl there. Her father is also missing. He went to Kadakare in search of both of them. There he saw the dumb girl. But she didn't know him. He got some details from her family. Her father brought her as she was weak and left her here and died. It turned out that the keeper of the lighthouse was her brother. At first she did not remember any siblings. She remembered all of them after she lost her footing again and fell into the sea. Others found out that she was pregnant. She also felt it and panicked. She used to go to the Kadakare Kulagar temple often and used to do King Karayam there. While at Kadakare, he met the mute girl's younger sister. Knowing that she was also mute, he felt sorry for her. He intended to marry her and live with her. Before that he wanted to go and inform the Pandya king. At this time Sempi and Mathavi, the title queen of the Chola Emperor Kandaradathar and the best in Shiva devotion, came to the Kadakarkarek Kulakar temple for Darshan of Swami. There the mute woman found Mandakini and took her with her. Her younger sister Vani also left with her. Satari Raman went to the Pandya country. There he learned that the Pandya king had gone to the battlefield. 
When he went to the battlefield and met the Pandya king, he told him to go back to Sri Lanka and give the straw to the Sri Lankan king and leave. He also said that he would make an effort to bring back the mute girl again on his return. Satariraman returned from Sri Lanka and went to Palayare. The memory of Vana never left his mind. Mainly because of his desire to meet her, he went to Padayare. But when he saw her there he was startled and astonished and horrified. At Arunodaya, while he was approaching the Palayara through Aralarankare, he saw a woman crouching on the riverbank digging a hole. Even that didn't surprise him that much. A bundle of clothes lay beside her. From within came a very soft voice, the cry of a small child. As he approached with the furious disgust of what kind of sandalwood woman would arrange to bury a child alive, the digger straightened up. Satariraman came to know that she was Vani. Brother, what would I have been like then? Guess for yourself. Said Kariya Thirumal. I'll guess so. Then tell the story. Vandiya the van said. It is impossible to tell what happened then. The royal clan can only tell by ear. If only I had not gone to Padayara at that time, none of the hardships that happened behind me would have gone away. Said the thinker. Then go. Let's go and tell the royal clan. Vandiya the van got up laughing saying that. He approached the treasure dungeon along with the Samariman. There was no one there then. The dungeon door was locked with a large lock. But when Vandiya the van pressed the inner door, which was arranged so that no one could find it, it opened. Both of them entered and settled inside. On the way Vandiyadeva entered the place where gold, beads, pearls and jewels were piled up. Karutharamakan asked, Are there so many riches in your mountain cave of Rahana? He asked. There are a hundred times more. Karyatharumal said. Vandiyathevan took some gold coins and tied them in his lap and they left again. Vandiyadeva went ahead through the dungeon path. He also opened a secret door in the wall. There was no guard there now. At first he stretched out his head and looked outside. The flood reached both banks of the North River. A torchlight was visible in the distance. Vandiyathevan came out after knowing that there was no one near that place. After Karutharaman came, he slammed the door. While he was thinking about how to cross the North River, he saw that a boat was stuck in the roots of a tree leaning on the side. 